presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to uh, Al in Tampa. Hey, Al, what's going on? Oh, it's a beautiful thing. I mean, if your listeners don't get the gold report, they're, uh, they're missing out. I mean, you're, with your gold report, you're just printing money. I love it. Uh, you're my best ad out there, Al. Let's go to uh, Jeff in New Jersey. Hey, Jeff, what's going on? Great. Uh, hey, listen, I was calling to thank you. Uh, a few weeks ago, you were prompting on your show to fill out that uh, $10,000 uh, grant. Yes. So I filled it out, and um, just a couple days ago, I found $1,000 in my business checking account. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Yeah. And I owe it to you, because it, uh, if it wasn't for your prompting, I would have just assumed, you know, no way I would have gotten anything. So I, I wanted to thank you. No, we appreciate you growling a problem with us yet. Now. Tom O'Brien. Good afternoon, folks. This is Jacob filling in for Tom O'Brien. He will be back tomorrow. Uh, today we're seeing a little bit of a uh, bounce back on the major indices. We have the Dow up a bit. Uh, NASDAQ still down a little. Um, S&P 500 up a little bit. SPY. The dollar has made quite a move up. Now, we broke that 102 level and... Uh, We'll see if we can stick up there from the 101. I, uh, last Friday, we were just kicking over the 101. So it seems like the dollar is rallying a bit. Obviously, gold is taking a step back quite a bit. Um, and then we have the ES Mini up just a bit. It's a nice green line right there for you all. So what is going on this week? We have a lot of earnings. Um, obviously, Schwab knocked it out of the park. Let's see if we can get Schwab up for us. Ah, it's top one. So, with Schwab, uh, the just in earnings left about 20% to $0.93 cents per share, um, while revenue rose 10%. A lot of this is being driven by uh, higher returns on loans. Uh, net interest income spiked 26% to $2.77 billion. Uh, trading revenue declined 7% to $892 million. Uh, bank deposits tumbled 30%. I think we all... <clears throat> kind of expected that. Um, and that was down to $325.7 million, and total assets fell 21% to $535 million. And uh, Schwab also decided to pause its share buyback program uh, in light of the recent banking events. Um, so th that was a nice bump up. Um, we also had, let's see here, M&T, they popped up similarly um, due to the same kind of reasons, right? The higher interest rates... Um, are just returning a lot back on their lending. Now, if we're looking at, um, let's see here. State Street is a custodian bank. So they're holding on to these kind of just assets in general, um, and they manage them. Uh, th this fell pretty grossly. Um, uh, they're down 10% today on the earnings. Generally speaking, though, it seems like the banks are poised uh, for some for some nice bump up, I would suppose. I think Bank of America, we're gonna see something similar. Um, what they're talking about, um, at least the market views this as well. Um, obviously you had some big volume on the downside, um, but you're getting a nice increase back up. Some high volume earlier today, about 1.30 p.m. Um, and they're saying they their forecasts are pretty solid as well. Now, I wanna take a look at this here. This is um, from Morgan Stanley. And, of course, we're going to increase this a little bit. Oh, man. So this is the S&P 500 sector returns. Uh, you see financials have a real high increase, at least on the one week, right? They're very heavily weighted. So this is all your banks. Uh, energy as well. We know that. Uh, industrials, materials. Um, consumer staples obviously going down. Interesting technology. Definitely like in fintech as well. Um, this is seeing a huge hit, utilities, and of course we know real estate. Um, it's pretty interesting. We can, I'll read through a little bit what Morgan Stanley had to say. Um, is this is throughout the week in the first quarter. Earnings seasons is underway with the large U.S. banks releasing results last Friday. And obviously we have some still coming up. Uh, current analyst estimates are tracking operating earnings per share. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, operating EPS of 49.54. 
uh, representing year-over-year growth of 0.4% and a quarter-over-quarter -quarter decline of 1.6%. Uh, at the sector level, these estimates suggest a change in leadership. Uh, the boost from the energy sector looks to set to fade due to normalizing commodity prices. And that's a huge thing to keep in mind as well. Even with the decrease of oil production with OPEC, you know, this is kind of might be meeting a um, strict up in demand on the larger kind of global scale on it. Um, so the current estimate of 7.6% uh, year-over-year earnings growth uh, for energy sector represents a sharp deceleration compared to recent quarters. So kind of act accordingly regarding that. Other things we have to look forward to tomorrow, um, Goldman Sachs, let's take a look here. Probably see something similar uh, with the other, got them right here, up modestly today. Um, and then Lockheed Martin, which will be interesting. I, I am eternally interested to see how these defense stocks operate, especially in this world. Um, I personally think that everything's essentially priced in, um, even dealing with uh, uh, the Ukraine war. Uh, but we'll see how they report. Um, and then Netflix. Um, and everyone online, you know, take for that what it is, seems to be really interested in Netflix. And we'll, we might see like a bump up on that. I'll be watching it. I'm not going to take any position, honestly. I think these prices are huge. Um, but, you know, we'll see what happens and, and how that returns. Also, we have Tesla. Um, that's going to be Wednesday. What's interesting about Tesla, too, is um, Elon via SpaceX is uh, having a rocket launch right before earnings. And obviously, SpaceX and Tesla are not um, integrated business-wise. But I think what's important to keep in mind on the broader scale is, is it seems like the, the kind of hotshot meme investors do see them as, as integrated. So whenever SpaceX does super well, Tesla roars. And it's more of like this getting exposure to Elon Musk as an individual, I think, uh, than, than uh, people investing just because of Tesla. Tesla's up just a little bit. Um, we'll see what earnings has to do uh, with them. IBM is down. They have earnings. And then ASML will be interesting. They do uh, the EUV. They're based in the Netherlands. They do the EUV um, chip etching. Um, but it seems like there's going to be a deceleration of chip orders. Um, so it, the delivery might get pushed out to a year. I was reading some analysts saying uh, just, you know, keep posted for that because it'll be interesting to see. Um, and these guys are probably going to ramp up quite a bit um, with the uh, kind of changing global developments. And then, of course, Thursday, Bank OZK, Blackstone as well. And we got Procter & Gamble and Freeport McMoran on Friday. And uh, I want to take a look at this just on a year today. Just, well, let's do it on a yearly, just because I'm curious. So we'll see if this gets any kind of like push out whatsoever. Um, it seems like it's flirting with that $45 area. It had some low volume on that test, or excuse me, high volume on that test, rejecting it. Um, so we'll keep posted for our earnings for Freeport McMoran. Uh, when we get back, we'll talk a little bit about um, Apple. They're doing something crazy uh, regarding Apple payment. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about Walmart and how they're pivoting away um, from their current kind of retail into some uh, other things such as uh, like health and fintech. So uh, stay tuned and we will be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. 
A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, take a look over here. We have now... A little while ago, I had the pleasure of doing a little bit of proofreading and publishing when we were going through a transition on our back end of Steve Rhodes' Mastering Probability. And this newsletter has such a wealth of information in it. it I mean, it, it goes above and beyond for um, regarding information, what it talks about, its breadth. Steve is always responsive. I mean, this is, this is really awesome. You can try a one month free, guys. Money back guarantee if you find out you don't. Uh, it doesn't vibe with what you're doing. Um, but seriously, folks, I would really recommend trying this out if you haven't yet. Steve Rhodes, are you there? I am. Jacob, is this, is this the inaugural show? Are I don't you? know. I don't. I I'm just uh, filling in for Tom where I can. So. <laughs> oh, perfect. Perfect. Oh, great. Well, you're you're doing great. Uh, glad to uh, glad to join you. Thanks for the nice comments about the uh, the newsletter. In fact, we'll talk just a little bit about that. Uh, but but first, what I thought we could cover. Um, is what, what I see just taking place in some of the general markets out there, you know, just to provide some folks with some areas to watch, some different levels and so forth. So this first chart that we have up on our screen, it's got the four daily equity future contracts. And most of my signals, um, not, not for individual stocks, but with regard to the general market are coming from the futures contracts. And the reason is because uh, they're trading, um, you know, nearly 24 hours a day, say 23 hours a day. And so it's providing, and so I'm a pattern recognition uh, trader out here. And so I need more information, not less information. And most of the time, the same signal that we would see taking place, let's say on the S&P 500 or the SPY, is not the same signal that is forming inside the ES Mini. So there's a big difference here. Now, I'm not suggesting that people have to trade the futures contracts, but a lot of uh, a lot of our listeners are, are trading, whether they're trading options or they're trading the leveraged ETFs out there. It's really important to understand what's going on inside those equity future contracts. So as an example, here are the four we'll go through each one of them on the daily time frame what the daily es mini form was an a to b equals cd pattern so jacob we were all turned on to that uh well but really by tom and and larry but i think larry is the one that really uh pushed that pattern out there because okay. of following you know hm gartley's work but but certainly tom uh, had the a to b equals cd uh, in fact you know that's where i first learned it was from tom and then and then uh, got involved with uh, larry so a great pattern. It works for all time frames. It works for all instruments out there. It's one of the workshops that I have for people that try to subscribe, that do subscribe to Mastering Probability. So it teach them all the nuances of that pattern. But here, what folks just need to be aware of, they can just write a couple numbers down on a pad of paper. So we have what's referred to as a sell the D point. Now, it's not just that it's an A to B equals CD pattern, Jacob. It's the fact that the pattern gets confirmed by bears, in this case here, because price is moving up. And the way that that is done is by taking 
take a look at Japanese candlestick charting. So I incorporate pattern recognition, and the way that those patterns complete is with the market telling us, and that's either through a bullish or a bearish reversal signal. So in this case here, what the ES Mini did was it formed a bearish shooting star candle. So I, uh, I'm not on a live chart, on a, I'm on a uh, PowerPoint out here, so I don't have the exact day, but four days ago, whatever that trading session was. So what that means, folks, is that as long as price doesn't close about 41.77, 75, we've got a top in place. Now, that top could just lead to a sideways move, uh, consolidation with inside its profile, a number of different things out here. The first level of support is 41.35. Now, I'm not sure exactly where we're trading at this moment, but watch at today's close, the 41.35 level. If price closes above below that, that'll be a close below the top of the daily profile. Now a profile, when I use that word, folks, that is, uh, uh, we, I use profiles to help me identify where buyers and sellers reside. In this case here, uh, the sellers did reside at 4135, but once price got above that, oftentimes old resistance can become new support. So a price close about 41.35 at today's close, we really have a, a neutral type signal versus, even though we have a top in place, we would have a neutral signal. And the reason, uh, uh, Jacob, that we would have a neutral signal is because price would be above two levels of key support out there. One, huh. the top of the profile, and in two, uh, a, line, uh, a line that's on my chart, it's red and green, it's called the oscillator and change line. When that line is green, which it is now for the ES Mini, it tells us that we have a price oscillator that is trading above zero. And a price oscillator is nothing, or an oscillator is nothing more than a, a measure, measuring the difference between two items. In our case, I'm measuring the difference between a 19 and a 39 day, in this case here, because it's a daily time frame chart, that, uh, that 19, to 35, 19 to 39 exponential moving average of, of for price. And when the line is green, what it's telling me is we have a rising price oscillator above zero. Those are bullish conditions, unless there's some resistance that we're really aware of that's right up in front of us, which is this 4177. So here's the here's the ultimate uh, numbers to write down on your pad of paper, folks. If there's a close below 4135, you should expect price to get down. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, if price, so I, I, my, my, I can I say I, I screwed something up here, but I, I'm, I'm anticipating that price will go target the 41.35 level. And if price closes below that, then we're going to take a look at 41, 14, and 40.76. Not until price breaks below or closes below 40.76 do we have any kind of a change in trend. So that's the ES Mini. We'll be much quicker here on the NQ. The NQ uh, would form or appears that it will form a Rhodes Mintum indicator top today. And if it does that, the first level of support is 13.062, which I believe we're trading above right now. If price were to close below 13.062, then that's going to bring the 12.705 to 12.770 area into play. For the Dow equity future contract, the area to watch, so the, the Dow does not have a topping pattern. So what we don't have here is synergy with regard to tops. Yes, we started off with the ES Mini showing the top. The NQ may form that top today, but the Dow does not have a topping signal. And so therefore, it remains bullish. That doesn't mean that it can't pull back. And if we do get a bearish reversal candle, that would then generate a sell the D point pattern. Should that happen, then we'd likely see price pull back to 33.738. And if price got below that, we'd be looking at 33.460 and then 33.3. 321. The Russell 2000 is just simply consolidating with inside its profile. And that's the bottom right hand panel chart out here, Jacob, and, and everybody listening in. 1722.70 is support. Bottom of a profile is where buyers are at. Top of a profile is where sellers are at. That's at 1825. And the center of that profile, that third line, should one exist where both buyers and sellers believe there's fair value with inside that price. So that's the bigger picture and key support uh, and or resistance levels to be watching. Now, a number of folks that are inside the den are simply intraday type traders. So what's the levels to be watching there? Jason, probably about uh, 13, 14 years ago, I took what was called, you know, Larry does a lot of work on uh, celestial type aspects and things yes. of that sort. So I took the entire, I got in touch with the author of The New American Ephemeris and paid him to give me a digital download of all that data. I then took all that data and was able to incorporate it into a different program that I had. And what I was looking for was some consistency, some event, some celestial event, some event out there, some planetary alignment, where every time that that occurred, it gave us an advantage. I wasn't able to locate that. <laughs> However, during that process, I was able to locate a lunar pivot point that works for reasons I don't understand. I just know that it works. And it's called Apogee and Perigee. Perigee uh -huh. came in this weekend on Sunday evening. Perigee is when the uh, Earth is uh, closest 
uh, to the um, moon during the lunar cycle. And so the key levels to be watching overnight for the ES Mini is going to be 4174. For the NQ is 13212. For the YM, the Dow is 34. Uh, 30, 34 125. Jacob and everybody listening, the price closes above that. It tells you not to be short those indices. The Russell 2000 is already trading above perigee, so it's got a, a mind of its own. So it's a great level to be watching for yeah. support and resistance, and those would be the levels to be watching. Endlessly so. fascinating. Endlessly fascinating, Steve. I'm <laughs> telling you folks, you just, just try out the newsletter. I mean, if that wasn't enough for you, I, I don't know what is. That was Thanks. awesome, Steve. Thanks, Jacob. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you so Best much. Best of luck on the rest of the show. <laughs> See you now. Bye. You bet. All right, folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. I'm taking a look here at Walmart. So some of the big news that came out is Walmart is selling uh, bonobos. And what bonobos is... Essentially, they're their male brand, right? They do like button up shirts and kind of things to that effect, right? The casual um, young men's wear. In 2017, Walmart paid $310 million for this brand. It's doing well. It's, the Bonobo itself is still a strong brand, but it's selling it today, or excuse me, a few days ago, uh, for $75 million to express. So quite quite the loss from it. Now they are selling it uh, with a deal for royalties, essentially, right? So it says Express, um, you know, Express has, uh, they, they do like cheaper, like uh, high, uh, how, how do you say it? Like if you're going to prom or something like that, or you're a young guy, you need like business attire, and you don't want to drop a lot of money, you're going to go to Express. And so they're, they're adopting that brand as well. 
Um, and this is an interesting pivot for Walmart, right? Because, you know, I remember a few years ago, Walmart was talking about opening something for optometry, um, maybe doing something regarding uh, like dental work. And it seems like they really are focusing still um, on healthcare and uh, also pivoting a little bit to fintech, getting away from hoarding these just just massive uh, brands, right? I know Moose Jaw, they sold that as well, and Shoes.com purchased and sold it, and I think their acquisitions guy kind of got nixed recently as well. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. The market didn't react too negatively to this whatsoever. It is nice, right? They're honing in on what they need to do. Uh, they're not, you know, Amazon is so, so dominant in this kind of... Um, in this kind of realm, right? Not with the healthcare and fintech, um, but Walmart has these brick and mortar stores, so what better to do with them instead of trying to compete online with Amazon is just pivot. And the brands you have currently that are falling into that, uh, that not falling into that category of healthcare and fintech, sell it and collect royalties. I think it's a really brilliant idea. Um, the market doesn't, again, seem to react too heavily at all to it. Um, so we'll kind of see what happens with that. I thought that was just pretty interesting. When I first saw the headlines, I was blown away that they were selling at such a discount. But, you know, give it a little bit of thought, and that kind of makes sense. So let's see here. Merck has purchased Prometheus Biosciences, which is working on, um, Prometheus works on uh, drugs for, like, Crohn's disease. Um, so, you know, let's go So I think it was announced earlier, get a little up on it, but what's interesting, obviously, as is always happens, is Prometheus is up like 70%. It, it, this is insane. Um, so this deal is like $11 billion, I think 10.8 to be exact. Uh, so that's just some interesting news to keep your um, eyes on. Um, very interesting. And uh, let's see here. One of the things I wanted to talk about, I'm not going to talk too much on it, but it was, and I don't, there's not really a good stock to show you or equity to show you for it. Um, but it's something I didn't know um, is uh, regarding cobalt, right? So cobalt is super in demand metal. Uh, it's used in all of our high tech gadgets, computers, your phones, in high demand. Usually it's extracted from the Congo. Now that has a lot of issues regarding um, whether or not there's fair labor going on there, um, also regarding just supply chain stability. Uh, due to that region being historically um, unstable. What I found out is that Idaho contains an extraordinary amount of cobalt, and it is being tapped, but it's about to ramp up as well. And so we might see a return to really, really heavy, um, you know, earth mineral mining uh, in the States. Idaho Cobalt Belt is a 34-mile long stretch of essentially just cobalt. Um, and this area is going to produce at least 2,000 tons of cobalt annually. As far as I'm concerned, there is a st equity Stravo, Stravois, but it, it's not traded that uh, well. Let me see if I can get the ticker for you. Yeah, I, it's, it's on the Stuttgart exchange. It's strange, yeah. Um, but it's something to keep in mind. It's super interesting. If we see more equities popping up that are getting into cobalt, it's something... Uh, to look into because cobalt isn't going anywhere uh, anytime soon. So, Google, they have a little bit of, they have some problems. Um, their share slid today on the reports that Samsung may choose Bing for search. And this is kind of strange to me, right? Yes, uh, you know, Bing integrating ChatGPT is huge, um, but also, to keep in mind that, that Google search already integrates pretty intense AI. They have such a large breadth of data, more so with Alphabet itself, more so than any other company in the world. Um, you know, to kind of bet against them, obviously something tangible like Samsung choosing Bing instead of Google is, is massive. But I think there's kind of a misconception here going on that chat GPT is somehow eons beyond what Google is doing. Um, Google is, has been working on something for quite a while, and they're releasing something called Magi, right? Um, it's, an, it's the same concept. AI-powered features to search, um, and that's kind of about all we have. But they really need to roll something out quickly, 
in order not to lose that Samsung contract because that is a tangible loss beyond um, the intangible where people are just kind of like, hey, um, you know, ChatGPT is, is shiny and new. It's been integrated to Bing. Let's use it. I've used the Bing search. I still prefer the Google search uh, myself. On that note as well, um, when, when I would be studying for something, just you know, any random topic I'm interested in, I started using ChatGPT. Super informative. Of course, uh, in the past when I was in uh, college and even in high school, we had something called Chegg. And Chegg essentially just had the answers to all the homework and quizzes. And that's, you know, obviously not a positive thing because you're not necessarily learning, but it was very, very profitable for that. Everyone I knew for the most part, save a few, uh, had subscriptions to this company. And ChatGPT, you know, basically became a pretty big competitor with it, right? Because um, you could just interface directly. Now ChatGPT is behind a paywall. Uh, schools have actually banned ChatGPT um, on their networks. So what Chegg is seeking to do, well, and I also want to add as well, ChatGPT isn't entirely uh, flawless in the data it, it gives you. It is wrong some amount of time. Chegg tends to be far more accurate. And what they're seeking to do now, which is a really interesting way to pivot, and that's what I find so interesting and why I'm bringing this up, uh, not because the equity is doing particularly well or anything, but they're seeking to be a middleman from ChatGPT to the students, and particularly, again, students um, who can't access it due to network limitations. I think that is super fascinating. It's such a good way to adapt uh, to, to a competition as opposed to just buckling under it. I think it's really neat. Um, let's see here. Regarding Google's Magi, and we'll see how quickly they roll that out, um, uh, the new product will predict users' needs with features such as helping users write software code and display ads in search results. <laughs> Wonderful. And uh, Google is also exploring mapping technology uh, that allows users to use Google Earth with the help of AI and search music through conversations with chatbots, which is pretty neat. Um, other products Google is considering launching in various stages of development, a tool called Giphy will use AI to generate images that can be displayed in Google image search, resu search results. Another tool called Tivoli Tutor uh, will teach users new language. That's super interesting to see. Cut in a little bit to Duolingo's market share. Folks, stay tuned. Talk a little bit about Apple. They're introducing a savings account with a 4.15% interest rate. Stay tuned. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today.
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Okay, so like I was saying before we went on the break, Apple launches its savings account with a 4.15% interest rate, which is knocking out that 0.35% on the usual savings. So let's see here. Apple on Monday launched its Apple Card savings account with 4.15% annual percentage yield. It requires no minimum deposit or balance, Apple said, and users can set up an account from the Wallet app on their iPhones. I may just do that. Users must have an Apple Card in order to open the savings account. The company said in a press release that all daily cash rewards earned through the Apple Card will automatically be deposited to the savings account. Daily Cash is the Apple Card reward program that offers up to 3% back on purchases, which is pretty neat. Um, users can change where their daily cash is deposited anytime and can also add funds from their bank account to build on their earnings. Um, let's see here. Apple is launching the savings account through Goldman Sachs. Very neat. Um, so this is, well, here, we'll see it here. So that average API, APY on savings accounts is just 0.35%. According to the FDIC, um, obviously huge. Now, this article is funny. It says, but competing savings account offered by large credit unions, online banks, and brick-and-mortar banks can also offer customers a significant APY. The only one they present is necessarily higher besides for VO and CIT. Um, they offer 4.75 and 4.77% uh, um, relative. Um, and then Marcus by Goldman Sachs has a 3.9% APY. So, you know, Apple's, this is... Also, all these require minimums, except for VO. This is huge, especially for like the younger generation that's not maybe so integrated. I'm talking like people my age, a little bit younger, like maybe in their early 20s or mid 20s. Uh, this is really going to get them interested in savings if they can, uh, you know, afford to put something away in savings, just depending where they live. This is super interesting. I'm going to read a little bit more on this. And what I mean by reading is I'm going to go in there afterwards after the show today and just check it out a little bit. Um, I think that's. I think it's very neat. Um, obviously, a 4.15% is better than a lot of people are doing um, in the general market on their portfolios. So, yeah, I think this is really cool. Um, and like I said, making having like fintech like this and just financing in general um, be more accessible uh, to the younger generation is huge. It's so huge. A lot of people I know honestly still keep cash. And I'm talking to even people in their millennials, like way into their 30s, are still like just sticking with cash. Um, this might get people a little bit more warmed up to the just structure of um, you know traditional finance in that way. Um, one of the things I mentioned was if young people can put this away, uh, the money away into a savings account. I found this super interesting. And this is about the extending uh, terms on mortgages, and I spoke a little bit. Uh, to a few weeks ago about even long-term uh, loans on cars, right? This is an article from Financial Times. Now, it says first-time buyers are increasingly taking out ultra-long mortgages. You can see here this massive increase. Um, obviously, that's the over 35. Um, the article is asking, you know, why? How are they doing this? Why are they doing this? And it's like, they, how are they affording? How, how can they afford to do this? It's like most people... 
can't afford not to do it. You know, this is like a, an issue with things being extraordinarily expensive in a lot of places. And the way you decrease your monthly payments is going to be by taking out a longer term loan. And yes, obviously, you end up paying far more in interest at the end of the term. Um, but, you know, you can either do that or just not have access to it. And that's the case for a lot of people. Again, I, I bring up that story of someone I know who had to buy um, a car made in 2016 and uh, a seven year loan on the thing just so they could meet monthly payments. Um, you know, it's it's an interesting market out there. And, uh, you know, we'll we'll kind of see how that takes off. I'll talk a little bit more coming up on uh, the, the EV pivot. Um, but, you know, that's going to make cars more expensive as well. Obviously, the Toyota CEO was talking about seeing a uh, 50,000 base price for these cars. But I think what this is going to end up doing is, you know, it. <laughs> basically setting a precedent, right? So like home prices might not decrease, they might not increase uh, substantially from this kind of thing. What's gonna happen is it's just going to make this kind of pay structure far more common. And over you know an extended period of time doing that, that becomes the standard. And is that necessarily a standard um, that you know is full of positives? Like maybe it's something to look at. I don't know. It is interesting. Um, this is an interesting article as well regarding it. The sharp rise in mortgage rates didn't just hurt home buyers, and the banks are now losing money on loans as well. Uh, JPM, Wells Fargo, and Citigroup were among some major banks that announced that they had a significant decline in mortgage originations. Uh, a separate report from the Mortgage Bankers Association also noted that certain banks actually lost money on originating mortgages for the first time since 2008. Uh, independent mortgage banks and mortgage subsidiaries of chartered banks in particular lost an average of $301 on each loan they originated in uh, 2022. Uh, for the first time, this is a quote, uh, for the first time since the inception of MBA's report in 2008, net production income was in the red, uh, with losses averaging 13 basis points. Uh, the rapid rise in mortgage rates over a relatively short period of time, combined with extremely low housing inventory and affordability challenges, meant that both purchase and refinance volumes plummeted. The stellar profits of the previous two years dissipated <laughs> because of the confluence of declining volume, low revenues, and higher costs per loan. Uh, at the big banks, origination volume fell as rates took off, and mortgage rates jumped uh, from 3% to 4% range in early 2022 with 6% range early this year. Um, comparing to the first quarters of 2022 and 2023 by originations, volume fell 77% uh, and JP Morgan to 5.7 billion uh, from 24.7 yeah, billion. That is immense. Wells Fargo says its origination volume fell 83%. Obviously, this is, you know, a little more to do with the increase in rates, but it just goes to show how, you know, strange this this market's getting, at least for just the common consumer, right? Um, so it's something to keep a lookout for. Um, I do think that we're going to see like huge, huge, huge term loans in the future. Um, pivoting over a little bit. Now, if you've been sticking with us for the past few weeks, you've already known this, but uh, it just came out today, or excuse me, Sunday, that Yellen says U.S. banks may need to tighten lending and negate need for more Fed rate hikes. Obviously, we've been talking about that since Powell came and spoke. Um, but it will be interesting to see how this pulls out. Um, I think that, I think it was Blackstone said that they actually do still see a 0.75 uh, rate hike coming in. That's interesting. That's obviously very extreme um, for what the rest of the uh, market is kind of saying. Um, but we'll see what happens. Uh, Yellen says that banks are likely to become somewhat more cautious in this environment. Um, we already saw some tightening of lending standards in the banking system prior to that episode, obviously speaking about the bank runs, uh, and there may be some more to come. Uh, she said that uh, would lead to a restriction in credit in the economy that could be a substitute for further interest hikes that the Fed needs to make. We'll see what happens again. Like, yeah, they are tightening a, a bit, but the banks are making some pretty good money right now. Uh, so we'll see what happens again. We're waiting to see if these like defaults really increase. Um, to see what the banks are going to do. Um, but strange times. Banks seem strong. Uh, labor market seems strong. 
and yet we're still kind of dealing with this kind of stuff here. So stay tuned, folks. We will be right back. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. All right, folks, we are back. Um, this is super cool. Bank of America reveals a uh, key driver in the crypto price. Um, now, this is super interesting. I'd not heard of this before, um, although it makes sense and it seemed like it was kind of a natural um, progression. But what it is, is essentially they're tokenizing gold. So they're pegging the price of stable coins, which are, you know, again, coins pegged to real life assets um, to gold. And this just got a huge bump up to a $1 billion market cap. And these kind of coins are uh, PAX and, and Tether gold. Um, but at the time of the, at the at the time that this was being written, at least, um, the market cap of Pax and Tether was 518 million and 499 million, respectively. This is insane. And so the idea is essentially, and this is why a lot of these Wall Street guys are kind of interested in this, um, or at least what the reason they're saying they're interested in it is uh, that it makes gold far more liquid. Right now, obviously, you don't really own the physical gold, right? Um, but it essentially allows um, you to fractionalize shares. Um, and uh, I, I think that's pretty interesting. And it seems to be that's kind of going to be uh, at least the future of the crypto realm is kind of these stable coins. And I mean, even the Bank of England, to an extent, is uh, coming out and making real statements saying they need to limit 
uh, using stable coins for payments or at least rules on it. Um, the, this quote here, um, this is the uh, deputy governor of BOE, says the systemic stable coins will need to be backed with high quality and liquid assets. Uh, and these could include either deposits at the Bank of England or very high liquid securities or some combination of the two. And we are currently considering which of these options is most appropriate. What's interesting with this, and you know, this there is there are precedents for this, is you make stable coins pegged on other stable coins, such as like tokenized gold coins like this. I don't know. It's definitely a, a brave new world regarding this frontier here, but it's just interesting to see it getting so much exposure and having such a high market cap. Folks, thank you so much for sticking with me these past three days. Tom will be back tomorrow. I hope you guys have a safe one. I hope you have a great one, and we will see you tomorrow.